now what I've got here to start the finishing on the antlers just some basic tools on the end here I have three different sizes of drill bits held into three different size pin vices now a now a pin vise allows you to drill slowly by hand as opposed to using a dremel or a drill which if you're drilling into resin you can actually drill too far in or you can you can actually shatter or, or at least break apart the resin from the heat of the drill so I like to use uh, drill holes by hand with pin vices I have my handy dandy favorite little modeling tool my stainless steel modeling tool here I have a triangular uh, jeweler's file or hobby file I have a flat file I have various different jeweler's files or hobby files curved a uh, curve with a flat and a curved round file uh, this is a wood carver's knife which uh, I use to take down seams we have the hobby knife and exacto knife again for taking down seams and trimming away these uh, let me move this over here these are carbide scrapers and these are from a company called Rio Rondo Enterprises now what these are these are made these were designed and developed specifically for taking down the seams on cast resins okay and they are very 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 nice they have a uh, single side blade or sometimes a double sided blade uh, autofocus is not my friend there we go this can take down seams uh, that has a little tiny edge right here for getting into tight tight places we have, there are other one other other carbide scrapers here as well they basically they're essentially they go in the sort of like a Dremel uh, rather an exacto knife handle you have a collet that you tighten down and this this side here this blade here is good for taking down seams like so even using the front of it to help take down seams on plastic this one here is looks like a knife blade but again these are all used for scraping okay this is the blade side they're real tempered they're real good they they scrape beautifully these will also be employed for uh, scraping down the seams and removing burrs from the plastic and whatnot uh, again cartilage knife a simple cartilage knife will be employed when needed uh, modeling tools I have a wooden modeling tool here just a double-ended modeling tool standard modeling tool for clay modeling I have here a Kemper tool it's this is a uh, double-ended rubber ended tool it has a sort of a uh, spade end on one side of the handle and it's rubber and this is what this is makes it nice for working resin and um, um, uh, uh, spot putty and whatnot the other side is rounded a conical rounded conical shape and again these are all good for helping to detail when the resin is put down we have these scrapers again these are used in, these are sculpting tools this can be used in sculpting to scrape clay away or scrape it flat okay I also have a, a rubber version of the scraper right here again these are Kemper tools they do they make a lot of uh, sculpting tools One of the things employed in uh, seaming resins is this uh, squadron white uh, white putty. Now th this is a good putty that modelers use to uh, hide the seams on plastic models. It's also good for working seams on resin models. Another product is from Deluxe. It's Deluxe Manufacturing. This is a product from England. Perfect plastic putty. 
Uh, I've used this on small HO scale figures to build up hair on top of people and whatnot and add details. This is also a good product for closing up the seams that you'll find on any of the, uh, the antlers that we're going to be working on here. And finally, another neat trick for filling in seams and surface distortions and missing tines on antlers is using a thick cyanoacrylate glue, in this case my Tech Bond Black, S1 Black. Uh, you apply a drop of the glue to the surface of whatever it is you're needing to fill in. And then using ordinary baking soda. Ordinary baking soda. I keep some in an old pill bottle. You would scoop up some baking soda and drop it right on top of the CA glue. And it will bond instantly. And create a hard surface. That's A surface, I should say, that's hard enough to actually file and sand once it sets. So using sculpting epoxy is not always necessary. There are other fillers and other things that you can employ to make these repairs. Uh, what the glue is sitting on here, the CA glue is sitting on, this is a file card. This is used for cleaning all the guck that forms on the surface of a file. And you use that like so. You take a file that's got some crud on it. And you can... Get the file clean. See the gook on this side? Get the file clean. Among the more specialized paints I'll be using are the Vallejo uh, model paints. And they have them in a brush-on form and in an airbrush form. Although you can brush on the airbrush paints, they will give you a more of a thin wash. You can thin it with the uh, airbrush thinner. It's, it's really good to use the brand airbrush thinner made for um, the, the, um, the brand that, of paint that you're using. Here we have sand ivory and here we have US sand. And both of these colors combined will be applied to the antlers to give me a base color after which I'll use oils and whatnot to weather and apply dark uh, streaks to the antlers. And you can see I was messing around with some of the paints with this in this little watercolor tray here and I did apply uh, all of these colors to the antlers came up with a nice combination. Uh, these were just simply brushed on as a quick test. Most likely I'll be using the airbrush to give it full even coverage all over the antlers. Okay, and we have the usual um, epoxy sculpt. And what I, what I will do is I will take uh, quite a bit of the white, mix in a tiny bit of brown at a time until I can achieve um, a similar color to the antlers that have been cast. Uh, that will be, this will be another Thing that can be used uh, for filling in seams and whatnot. Um, this is also the mix that will be used for the, to rebuild the um, the lower uh, um, antler base where the mold turned in on itself. Uh, but I, I'll be doing it in as close a color to the casting as I possibly can get. Uh, instead of adding white to brown, I'll be adding a little bit of brown to the white because the color of the castings are such are so light. In color, I wanna I wanna make a match to them. So, with all this, we're gonna get started. Now, where the seam is really really thick, the seam lines I should say are really really thick, like here. There are several ways to approach taking them down. One is to go along with the cartilage knife, and being careful not to open your thumb or your other fingers, go along and pare it away a little bit at a time. That's one way. Another way, another tool that I use, I like to use, again, a hoof trimming knife. This is nice and it's sharp enough to do the job on the resin. And you can cut your finger if you're not careful, but it's not as, 
it's not as harsh to cut the, it's not as easy to cut your fingers with a hoof knife no hoof knife as it is with a cartilage knife or even a hobby knife and you can see how this can take it down and the curved nature of the blade you see how it's curved allows you to get right down against the casting okay like so once the heaviest part is taken down you have several options and the one option I like is to use my carbide scrapers and these are great at taking down seams and you see that seam going away and it does it little by little and you can tell by just a little bit of plastic that comes off on the carbide scraper Again, sets of these are available from RioRondo.com. This is also a good tool for removing any of the surface imperfections that may have happened uh, during the casting. But you see how much this is, this is gone already. What I like about this is the rounded nature of the scraper. Allows me to get in and follow with the shape of the antler. It's very easy to control. Very, very, very easy to control. Much easier to control than a knife or even a, you know, a hobby knife or a cartilage knife or even the hoof knife. You can take down the highest seam. This is what this was developed for, for working on resin castings. I made molds and silicone molds and resin castings of my my horse sculptures and these are what I would use for finishing um, going along the seam lines because it's very 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 neat you get a very neat finish on this when you get it down to where you want you can very simply go to some of your files and again I have a nice selection of jeweler's files or hobby files and we could take it down even further with the file like so when it's taken down to a level that you feel comfortable with that's when you can start filling it filling the area in. Now what I like about these curved hobby files is that you can get in again and follow along the shape of the antler beam very 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 neatly. Another thing which I don't think I mentioned until now are the 3M sanding sponges. And these are wonderful. This is a fine. And these are wonderful for getting into these tight areas. I wouldn't want to use even a medium on this because I'm using the files and the scrapers. And the, the fine sanding sponge is just taking down the excess surface. Um, it's just taking the surface... Uh, seam down to a, a more even level with itself, with, in other words, with the casting, the main beam casting. And I really wish you could feel this. This is very, very, very smooth. And like I say, anything, anything with still a slight ledge from the seam, that can be taken down further with the file and or filled in. I would most likely use the uh, the hobby putty to fill this area in. But I'm going to continue removing the seams all around the entire set of antlers. And um, when I get that done and I get that resolved to where I, I want to start filling, uh, we'll come back on camera and you'll see it being done in person, at least with the filling.
All right, let me explain what I've done here on the uh, bit of the antler where I took down the seam. Now what I did was I took a big file, all right, I filed across the surface to level it all off. I then took my smaller curved files and I took off the tooling marks left by the big file. I then went over with the sanding sponge, smoothed it down even further. Then this, to fill in the seams, the seams were so slight, I was able to use the uh, the white putty, uh, the Squadron Products white putty filler. I went over that right into the seam, then took a brush that was dipped in alcohol, went over it to smooth it, went over that, the surface of that with a stainless steel modeling tool, let it set, I let it set. When it was fully dried, which, which takes about 15 minutes or so, I went over it again with the small curd file, and then again with the fine sanding sponge. Now, I'm going to do that again on this part of the antler here. And I'll do that now on camera. Okay. I did go over this outer portion here with the heavy file. I'm now going to take it down. I'm going to remove the, uh, the tool marks left by the file with a smaller, finer file. We go over it. Now, this is being done in real time, folks, so here we go. And the little disturbance in the force. Okay, the little disturbance in the seam will now be filled in with the squadron putty. And what I do is I squeeze out an amount of that onto the surface of the resin antler. Take a stainless steel modeling tool, model it into the cavity of the seam. Take the brush that's dipped in alcohol. Now let me get this alcohol over here. Take the brush dipped in alcohol. Go over this again. Take another stainless steel modeling tool and work it down into the seam so that the surface is flat. Okay, I'm going to add a little more right along here. Now, this putty is a little on the older side, so it's a little stiffer than it should be, but using alcohol to wet it down helps immensely in being able to spread it. And you can see right there, that's what's happening right there. Now take the modeling tool and go over. With a light rubbing action, I'm filling in the seam or the mark left at the seam. Now again with more alcohol to smooth it out. You can use a brush or your finger, doesn't matter. There we go. Now I'm going to put some right here along that at the edge of this seam. This stuff is a little older. It's and dip the tool in the alcohol.
get this evened all out or even this all out I should say I'll go over and smooth it again and there we go that seam is filled now the little little air pockets that formed here I'm going to use modeling tool and apply some of the putty with the modeling tool to those small areas just to fill them in fill in these little holes now, even though the mold was powdered sometimes the action of pouring the material into the mold and pouring it out of the mold can take some of the powder away with it so you can end up with little air holes but the main thing is to know how to fix these things it's not a mystery it's not difficult to straighten all this up now I'm, go I'm going to let this all fully dry and come back and sand over it with the fine sanding sponge 3M sanding sponge. Until then, we'll see ya. Alright, I got the entire right side of the antlers filled in. As you can see, the seams were taken down. The squadron white putty was used to fill in any of the gaps in the seams that were left. And as you can see, what we've got here, I mean, seeing is not as a, is not being able to appreciate it as much as, as actually feeling how smooth this is. But you can see where the seams were filled in, or where they were lifted or a little or tucked in a little, no matter what happened with the mold. Now, around here, this was done. Now, you have to be careful. You have to have the, your actual mold uh your antlers here to make sure that well like this little dimple here is actually part of the antlers and not a defective from the mold of course we know this big hole is natural and that's this side and around here back to the first side that i was working on on camera you can see what's been done here okay and these little tiny marks here these little dots and sort of horseshoe shaped and whatnot and little crescents those were little surface air pockets that showed up as the antlers were sanded down they're filled in now the white the white filler here this is the uh this is the deluxe materials perfect plastic putty it dries a lot whiter than the squadron white putty this dries to a more off-white which is really what you're looking for what i'm going to do now i'm just going to fart around with this i'm going to i'm going to run some paint on here with a brush you can see this this time this is the time the color test was done on right here so you can see what i've been able to do but I'm, I'm going to just run a little bit of a couple layers of paint on this just to see how she covers up um i may wipe it off again and then airbrush it this was just wiped on with a, uh, put on with a brush. And that looks pretty good. I'm pretty satisfied with that. But I want to go over it with some color. I want to even it off and see how well uh, my working on these antlers has turned out. Well, this is just farting around, adding some, just a little bit of color. Let me get this darn thing focus on the antler. All right. All right. Well, this is just farting around with the uh, the sand ivory number seventy one point oh seven five of the Vallejo, and this gave it the yellow tinge 
that the real antlers have. The antlers have a yellow undercoat, sort of, I guess you'd say, to their, to their color. When this dries, I'll go over this with a coat of the U.S. sand, number 71.112 of the Vallejo model air paints. Now, this was just applied with a skimpy little artist brush, okay? Uh, the way the way that the two base colors will be applied uh, on a on a, a regular basis will be with an airbrush, and I'll tell you why. Two reasons: one, you get a more even coverage, and two, you don't get any little hairs from the damn brush stuck on the surface of the antlers that has to be then removed. But it looks like the coverage over the filled area worked out great, uh, and it also seems that the filled area. The putty itself is the, is the part that's going to take a little longer to dry. You can see the shine on it. But it does dry flat. And it will dry flat once it completely dries. And I may go ahead and I, I may use some uh, a little hair dryer to help dry the paint. Help facilitate the drying of the paint. Oh, very much better. Very, very much better. This is a good base color. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. That's a nice base color. That's nice. And like I said, there's a yellowish color to the underside of the real antlers. There is a yellowish base over which the brown will be applied. Well, not to the antlers, but to the reproduction. That's the way it will be applied, and that's the way it will be done here. All right, now I'm, I'm now overlaying a little bit of the U.S. sand to the antlers, and I'm getting a nice brown overlay color. And like I say, these paints are so thin, and I, I've, I've gone ahead and thinned it with the Vallejo thinner, but these paints are so thin that the yellow base is allowed to show through, which is what I'm looking for in regards to this. Now, like I say, this is just a quick test run. This is not, you know, the finished product by any means. But uh, I just, I wanted to try this real quick for the camera. Let me get the blow dryer here real quick. And uh, see if I can't dry this up and get the shine out. Yeah, I like that. Nice and flat. That's what I like about these paints. They dry nice and flat. Okay, when these colors are applied with the airbrush, they're going to look real, real cool. I say, this was just a quick test, and I mean a quick test, just brushing it on. The final paint application won't be brushed on. It will be airbrushed, not handbrushed. And you can see little areas that would need some touch-up. Right here, there's a little, little goober. There's a little tiny air pocket there. And then we go around, and we can see how nice the, the repaired seam area has turned out. And you can see that. So I think, so far, it's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. The finishing is going along just about where I want it. I really can't complain. Like I say, this was just a quick test. Just to see what I could do with a brush and an overlay of colors. 
but it's getting closer and closer base color to the actual antlers. Um, it'll it'll reach that more once I put I go over it with some oils and give it a dark wash of uh, burnt umber. That will really uh, make the colors pop. But this is where we're at for now. Uh, when I airbrush it, uh, I'll show that back on camera so you can see it being done. Uh, what I'd have to do with this particular set, this particular set of antlers needs the tips of the tines rebuilt, as you can see. The tines are quite missing on this mole, on this cast. Uh, I did not get powder down deep enough into the tip of the, the mold. And in fact, when this mold came up, there's little white spots, and that's not white resin on the tips. That's simply um, um, air pockets that were formed. So these will be drilled out. These will be drilled out. And that'll, pro that'll be the next thing I show is drilling out the tips and replacing the tips of the tines or rebuilding the tips of the tines. I'm going to take a probe. I'm going to set the hole in the center of the antler tip with a probe. Okay, now that I've got <laughs> I've got this situated in the center, which I did have to do off camera so I could see what the hell I was doing. Again, I'm going to get the first sized bit that I I started with, and I want to start going in in the center. It doesn't need to be deep, but deep enough so that the wire, I'm using an 18 gauge wire down here by the way, 18 gauge galvanized wire, regular taxidermy wire. I'm holding the drill bit pretty steady with my hand. Now you don't just pull it out, no, 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 you need to back it out. So we turn it in the reverse manner. And we back it out. Now I go in with a little bigger bit, a little larger bit, next size up. See if I can get that right dead center and not lose any resin. Now oh, that's falling up into the pin vise. All right, I'm going to see if this is tight enough yet for the wire. Deep enough and tight enough for the wire to accept the wire. Let's see what we've got here. Actually, you know what? That's in there pretty good. All right, I'm going to take a, uh, a wire nippers and I'm going to cut an angle to the wire, a nice sharp angle. So I have something to go into the antlers. I'm going to file any of the any of the harsh metal. I want that out of the way. I want I want this edge smooth. Let's see how she fits now. Okay, I'm going to drill the hole just a little bit deeper. Finishing up with the larger drill bit, a larger drill bit again. All right, you see how that brings the plastic right out of there. Whoops! See how that brings the plastic up out of the hole when you turn it on reverse mode. <clears throat> now we take the wire and we go into the hole. Now that's good. Now I need to determine how much point I need. So I'm just going to make a, a simple, a basic cut, and I will trim this down. I'll trim this down after I get it fitted. I want to get my pliers out to hold the wire real well, because my fingers don't. I'm going to work this in, and because it has that point, I want that to kind of bore itself in a little bit. And there's the wire in place.
using the real antler as my guide, I'm going to find a anchor point, I guess you can call it. And that will be here, right where it meets the front of that little divot. Hold the ruler against the antler. And you can see I've got about three and three and five eighths inches up is where it needs to be. I can then go to the time I'm rebuilding, do the same thing. Go here, lean it against the antler, three and five eighths, find that and mark it with a marker. And this is where my cut will need to be made. will be made right here. And now with the wire cutter, I'll cut that tip of the wire off. A slight angle. There we go. This is now the proper height for rebuilding that tine. And it has a slight curve to it as well. Slight, slight curve. Now, again, I want to take down the sharpness of it. So I'm going to go along and I'm simply going to take off the point. And I want to take off the edge that was created by the wire cutter, the wire nippers. Now she's no longer sharp. Now we start the fun part. The wire is coated. The wire is coated with the CA glue. And this is the thick CA glue and it's thick for a reason. It does not set up immediately like you might think. So you have some time to get the baking soda and touch it to the wire containing the CA glue. You want to get it around all over wherever there's glue. You want it everywhere. And let this set. And let that set about a minute. Blow off the excess. Apply more glue. Apply another layer of glue. Like so. And now, deposit some more baking soda to the CA glue. Let that sit just a few seconds. Take the modeling tool, press it into the glue. Blow away the excess. And you can see how that tip is being reproduced. It's being rebuilt. Little by little. And sure, you can use epoxy sculpt if you like. Use whatever you want. This just happens to be a little secret in model making. Not really a secret. If you build models or you create anything like this, you'll know about super glue or CA glue and baking soda. Now, I'm going to repeat this all the way around the tine, and I need to be able to move the antlers, so I'm not going to be doing the rest of it on camera. But when I come back, 
I'll show you how we start filing it into shape. And here we have it. It's been modeled all the way around. Now we can take a file. It should be set. But we can take a file to it and carefully, gently, start shaping the super glue baking soda combination shaping it with a file bringing it down to size making it a little larger is not a problem in fact in the world of producing my resin uh, horse castings every now and again even with powdering the mold up into the ears the ears can come out without a tip and when that happens you can either sell it as a second which is bogus because it costs a lot of money to produce one of those darn things or you figure out how to rebuild the ear now when you rebuild an ear on a, a horse casting you don't even use a piece of wire you build it up little by little first a drop of CA glue with an application of baking soda you let that set build up another drop you let that set all the way around you do that now I'm gonna get this to the shape that's on the original antler and you can see it, you can see it coming at the shape now. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Sorry about these things will drive you a little batshit crazy if you let them. Now here we go. all around all around now to go with something a little smoother a little finer I'm going to use the sanding sponge the file takes it down the fine sanding sponge will smooth it And blend it and you can see I hope you can see right here how well that's blended to the I was gonna say the actual antler but to the the resin casting of the antler uh, this is another way this is also a way to repair the tip to a real antler should for God forbid with any reason for whatever reason uh, the tip of the antler breaks off. Okay, this is an excellent way to repair a real antler. And you can see I'm giving it a slight curve of the original. get one of my curved modeling files and I need to bring this down to the level of the resin it just has a little sort of kick out there we go and this is small enough to get in where I need it to be and this is how that is accomplished. It's hard to get a focus on it, but it's very very and it, it's not delicate. It's not as delicate as using um, 
sculpting epoxy, okay? It is not that delicate. Now we've got the actual antler. Let me, let me bring that up. Here we go. Oops. Here are the two antlers. The real antler, the reproduction antler, and the repaired, replaced tip of a tine. Now here's the tip, but just a little, just a little bit of the ivory sand, the sand ivory brushed on, just a light brushing. Just to show what we've got here. It's that easy. It's just that easy. <clears throat> and here it is again with a little bit of color added next to the actual antler. It's a good build up. It's a good build up. Well, here is the set of antlers I've been working on on camera. Uh, all of the tips have been rebuilt. All the seams have been closed off and sanded down. Uh, one of the worst missing tips was this one here. Also, we had a little bit of uh, missing antler along the bottom edge here. That's all been rebuilt. The antlers tips were rebuilt with wire and super glue with um, baking soda combination. The underside of the antler here, well this was a layer by layer buildup of the squadron putty. Overall though, I think I have a pretty good set of reproduction antlers. Now the last one that came out of the mold, I was more careful with it. Um, I really got the powder into the mold and really got the powder out of the mold. When this one was cast, I didn't have enough air pressure to blow all of the air out of the uh, mold. And so I had some, I had some uh, missing areas. I had some areas in the tips where the powder stayed and kept the resin from getting through. Um, but uh, the last set, uh, I have a perfect set of all points except this tip, and I'll show that in just a minute. But um, I have a good result here. I have a real fine result here of antlers that have been rebuilt, restored. And the last thing that they're going to need is to have a color restored. And that's, uh, that's another project in and of itself. So for now, I'm closing this segment right here. And here is the fourth and last copy I made out of the mold. Carefully making sure the powder got everywhere, making sure there was enough air pressure. I used 60 PSI to blow it completely out of the tips. And then by rocking the mold around, pouring resin out, putting it back in, rocking it around, pouring resin back out, I was able to make sure all the tips got covered. The only one that missed was that this tip here. And of that, it was a lot less missing than on the last one. It was maybe, maybe an eighth of an inch that needed to be rebuilt. But overall, this was a much better set that came out. I also made the resin just a little bit darker, so it's a little darker shade of brown than the original one was. But uh, as you can see in this one here, again, this is a good set of antlers, good casting. I have a good second reproduction of my deer's antlers. So I'm very happy with this. Very happy with this. And uh, most likely this one here will be the one to go on to the life size. The originals are going to go on to this form for the pedestal. Uh, eventually down the line I'll be able to get a life size buck and the, mat uh, the mannequin for it. This rack heel will go on top of that one. I just have a few more areas on the seams to fill in with the white squadron putty and that's it. But this is this is good. And then of course restoring the color, but this is a real good set of antlers. These are two real nice sets of reproductions of my little 10-point buck. 
I'm real happy with both of them. Uh, I feel this was really successful. And I'm happy. I'm happy with it.